with good mothers. See, you can't keep them all the time. They get to look at somebody else and they want to do what you did when you were 17, 18, 19, 20. And so therefore, they go off as somebody else and have their own children. But nevertheless, you may not can be with them every day. You can't hold them every day. But thank God forever in your heart is that child that you brought in the world. And that's the way it was uh, with Hannah. And so as Samuel became a servant in the temple, just a little boy, and was raised there. And you think that Hannah went back home and forgot about him? You think that Hannah didn't know that he was there? You think just because a distance separated them that Hannah didn't know about him? No, not at all. Because Hannah made a little coat. And she put them together. A beautiful coat, I believe, that she could possibly make. And when she went up to the temple, she took these little coats and gave them to Samuel. Now you say a little coat wasn't much. You know, sometimes it don't take much to make a lifetime connection between a mother and a child. Sometimes people think money will do it. You know, they think money will do it. If, oh, if I just had more money, I could do more for my children. You cannot do more for your children than to love them and be there for them when they need you. That's the greatest thing you can ever do for that child is be there. You can't buy them happiness. You can't buy them. You might buy them Nikes and Jordan Airs and all that stuff, but Air Jordans, but you cannot buy them happiness. And if you want to take a child and get them to the place where that they don't know you anymore. Just give them everything they want and I guarantee you that child will be ruined forever. You'll have to do some changing. But just to know that somebody loves you. Did you ever hear about the battle stories and soldiers that were on the battlefield, World War II and all wars? That when the shelling got heavy and they'd sit down in the, in the dark and write a letter to their mother. And many of them, I've seen testimonies of one that would be killed, another one live. And they say the last thing they did, tears were rolling down their face and they were crying their mother. They're crying for their mother. They wanted their mother. They were soldiers, they were tough, and they were hardened. But there was something happened in a bond between them and the virtuous mother that in their dying hour, they said, I want my mother. That is what motherhood is all about. Forming a bond between your child that nothing can ever break. And that's what happened with Hannah that day. It never broke. She took him a little coat that she made. Samuel grew up and became a great prophet. He grew up and he came and brought a message to Israel when it was failing and when it was dying. You know what we need in America today? We need some mothers to have some children that will rise up in the midst of this time when our nation is falling. Our nation is dismissing good and taking up evil. We need some children that will go out from the womb of the mother and stand in the midst of it all and say, I don't believe a word of it because my mother taught me about a man named Jesus Christ, the son of a living God. And I will stand before this world and tell you that the only hope for it is the God of my mother, the God of my virtuous woman that brought me into the world is the answer to all of our problems in the nation today. His virtuous mothers would go back and when they have marches of all kinds and they have rallies and they have all of these things, you know what will bring our nation back to where it will belong when we have a big rally and people start going back to church like they should. They aren't going back to church like they ought to. Give up some of those things of the world when it's God's time in the house and bring that child to the house of God. If you only bring it every now and then, it will probably not even go every now and then when it gets older. But if you grow that child up to know that where we are this morning is one of the most precious places that any of us can be in this whole wide world is in the house of a living God. Whether it be here at Ickra Grove, whether it be in China, whether it be in Russia, whether it be in New York City, or wherever it might be, the most precious thing in the world would be a house full of people that were brought up by virtuous mothers that taught them about Jesus Christ and his love and his grace and his glory. He would move us towards perfection in this world that we'll never see without it. Oh, thank God for virtuous mothers. 
There's another virtuous mother I'd like to think of for a few minutes before I close. And that is a woman named Mary. Mary, just a young girl, like any other ordinary girl. She was just happy-go-lucky, probably in the neighborhood, and all of once, there she had a visit from an angel. You know what? Do you believe in angels today? Amen. I believe in angels. Yes. I believe there's angels surrounding this church this morning. I believe there's angels over top of the roof. I believe there's angels everywhere. I mean, and then somehow they figure out each one of us have two angels at least to guard us. And I told somebody I'd been alone this weekend. I said, all except me and the Lord. And I said, there is another one I'd like to have there, my angel, but she's up in Virginia. And she wasn't with me. Oh, wasn't that sweet? Don't tell her I said that. Don't, don't tell her I said that. She'll expect something out of me. <laughs> but we have angels. And so the angel came to Mary and told her she's going to have a child. This young virgin, she's going to have a child. You see, God works through virtuous people. And if there aren't virtuous people, there's some women that God made virtuous. Remember Mary Magdalene? What, what, what he saved her from and what he brought her out of when they were almost ready to stone her to death. How Jesus stepped in the midst because he saw something in her that no one else could see. He saw something the law couldn't see. He saw something the scribes couldn't see. He saw a woman that was going to be virtuous in one of his darkest moments and darkest hours. He, she came to him with a priceless box of ointment. Brought it to him and break it. And when she broke that box of ointment, they, Judas looked at her, about out of fit, because a little bit of money, he said, was wasted. That was priceless. I, I didn't know the cost of it in, in dollars, but I can't remember it right now. But it didn't matter to her what it cost. She was going to anoint Jesus for his burial. You know why? She was a virtuous woman. When we come to church today, did we have Jesus on our mind? Did we have Christ foremost in our heart? I'm going to serve God today. And if we did, God's going to do something good for us. But nevertheless, as the tears streamed down her face, she took her hair and washed his feet. We need women like that back in the church today. That will stand up for Jesus Christ. We need men also. But today's Mother's Day. I'll get you men Father's Day. But we need... We, we need virtuous mothers. Here's this little girl. All of a sudden found herself with a child. An angel had come and visited her. And then that child was born in Bethlehem of Judea. And when it was two years old, it was so dangerous in that country. Because Herod was having all those children, two years younger and younger, killed. She probably thought fear in her heart when she heard that. But then the angel came again. Do you know sometimes problems come uh, in families and so on? But here's what you have to do. You have to, it's not how big the problem is. It's how big you know that your God is. Don't tell God about your problem. Tell your problem about a God that's able to bring you through. It's not easy in this day. I know for anybody that's spiritually concerned. There was... ISIS is killing Christians everywhere that they can find them. And you probably saw on television where they had the 21 men.